So you were saying earlier you had a uh, uh, another music theory video. Yeah, that's what I was checking out. It's got a bunch of, I guess it's got about, I don't know, 30 different concepts that he goes over, but he kind of ranks them in order of um, importance, kind of, of the you know, importance of what you need for all the time playing or what you need for, or right, or for what you need for playing, you know, gigs or yeah. what you need for doing studio work. So some of it is broken down to like helpful stuff for sheet music mostly, but not for when you're playing as much. But let me see here. Uh, it was by... And I would imagine like the the like the five five ones and uh like uh yeah progressions and cadences yeah he goes over those definitely yeah those are the ones that you're going to use over and over again five one five four one <laughs> yep those definitely ranked up there let me uh, get that loaded up over here yeah we've been practicing some of these uh uh progressions the last couple of nights after Joe got his shit plugged in oh, we were doing some wild chord progressions nice so this is by David Bennett piano is the channel and it's a 30 minute video but we can you know we can break it at any time just let me know I'll probably bring the volume yeah, down a little bit so see what you got this video is sponsored here it is after commercials okay. Super tasty. I'm gonna have one before I go so I can fuel up properly. This video is sponsored by the piano learning app, Scoove. As somebody who makes videos on the internet about music theory, Scoove? I've been told countless times in the comment section that you don't need any music theory. You don't need I've to know any music theory before. to play music, to write music. And that is true. You don't actually need to know any music theory to write a song, to play music. You could even go up to a piano and not know what the notes are called and string them together in an order that you like and you've written the song there without knowing any music theory at all. But I think anybody who's learnt some music theory will agree when I say that even knowing just some basic theory concepts can go a massive way to expanding your potential as a musician. Particularly when it comes to communicating your ideas to other musicians, knowing some fundamental music theory concepts yes, can massively help there. Important. But the thing is, you don't need to know all of music theory to do that. You only need to know some of it, some of the more important aspects of it. You don't need to get bogged down in microtonality and the harmonic spectrum when all you're trying to do is communicate a chord progression. So today what I want to do is I want to rank That's why music a lot theory of concepts by their importance. I want to go from the need to know stuff be to the nice to know stuff. And I thought a good format to do that in would be the tier list, a common thing on YouTube where you have the bottom tier, F, the least important stuff, the least important music theory concepts. And then the top tier, S, super, the most important, the most fundamental things that you should know about theory. And what we're going to do, we're going to go through various theory concepts and place them on this list on how important they are. So let's start with one of the most fundamental things in music theory, something so basic and rudimental that you probably don't even think about it as music theory. And that's knowing the names of the notes, being able to identify on your instrument, this is an A, this is a B check, flat, check. this is a C sharp. If you don't know the names okay. of the notes, then you're going to have a pretty hard time doing anything more advanced like chords or scales. So let's put note or names with up at the top, people. the most important thing to know in music theory and something that pretty much everyone is going to know, even those who claim that you don't need theory. So we've talked about note names, but now let's talk about chords, notes played What's up, together. Tony? Can you hear me? And more precisely, triads, yep. three note chords. Can hear you. So we're talking about major chords, minor chords, and also augmented chords and diminished chords. And you could even extend now, this to sus2 and sus4. And I think most people will agree that triads, particularly diminished. major and minor chords, are very fundamental to playing music. If you want to perform any song or even write your own song, you're going to need to know some essential chord types. This is going to go up there in the Oops. S tier as well. On. One of the most important things to know is triads. But let's talk about some chord types that maybe are slightly less important. What about seventh chords? So seventh chords are still very common and very important, and they're also very useful. But they're not as common as triads. And in a way, you can sort they're of substitute a seventh play. chord for a triad. So for example, if a song asked you to play C7, 
if C7 was in a song and you didn't know it, you could just play C major instead, and you could still do a fairly good version of that song. So for that reason, I'm going to put 7th chords in the A tier. I still think that they're very important things to know because they're one of the most common chord types across all of Western music really, but you can get away without them if you really want to. Another chord concept is inversions. So when you play a chord but the root note isn't at the bottom of it. So if you had C major for example, and rather this than C being the lowest pitch, you actually had one of the other notes as the lowest pitch, like E or G. And this would sometimes be shown as C slash E or C slash G. And these, a bit like seventh chords, can be substituted for more basic triads. So if a song asked you to play C slash E, you could just play C and you'd pretty much get away with it. It would certainly lose um, a character there that you might have wanted, but you could still play the song without inversions. So for that reason, I'm also gonna put inversions in the A category. Very important, really quite fundamental, but not yeah, essential, not it's my absolutely favorite. essential. So we've talked about triads, seventh like chords, inversions, triads. but what about more sophisticated chords? Things like nines, elevens, add 13, flat nine, all that sort of stuff. That's what we call upper chord extensions. Anything which goes beyond the octave, beyond the eighth degree of the chord. And this sort of stuff, and this is not only is still you know, substitutable, you could still put triads in its place if you didn't know how to play it, like with the other options we've talked about so far. But with upper chord extensions, you could even swap them out for seventh chords. So for example, if you were asked to play a C9 and you didn't know how to do that, you could do a C7 instead, and it would have a very similar effect. So for that reason, I'm gonna put them in the B tier. So that's chords, but let's move on from chords. Let's talk about something that's more of a skill rather than a piece of knowledge, and that's ear training. So ear training is when you identify things about music purely using your ears. You don't have to read it, you don't have to be told about it. You can listen to a song and say, that song's in 3-4, or like that's sexuality. got the chord progression C, F, G, or something like that. <laughs> it's not necessarily having perfect pitch. Perfect just pitch would sort of be the, the ultimate form of ear training. But we're talking more about what's called relative pitch, which is like perfect pitch, but you require a reference note to sort of work out what you're listening to. I think ear training is one of the most important things you can have as a musician. You, of disagree. course, could go your entire career just reading sheet and music, it's not easy reading to chords, and never having to use your ears to work out what music is doing. I just but that's going to be massively limiting, and it's going to restrain the way that you listen to music, the way that you conceptualize music. So even having a basic ability to identify things about music using your ears is incredibly valuable. So I'm going to put that in the S tier. And sort of following on from ear training, let's talk about intervals. So. Intervals yeah, are the, be gaps the between top. two notes, two given notes. So if we had the note C and we had the note G, the gap between them is a perfect fifth. And the reason that knowing the names and sounds of intervals is valuable is not only will it help you pick them out of songs when you're listening to them, but if you wanted to transpose the song, perhaps the singer says, oh, can we take this song up a major third? If you know what a major third is, if you know what interval that is, then you'll have no problem doing or it. If you're in a and it's that sort of thing where the knowing says. the names of the intervals is a very yeah. fundamental aspect of music. So once again, that's going to go up in the A tier. Now, when you talk about music theory, I think a lot of people think about scales. So let's put some scales onto our tier list. And let's start with probably what most people would think of as the most important scale, the major scales. If you know your major scales, if you know how to play all 12 of the major scales on your instrument, that's, it's almost like pre-learning songs because so many songs are based around the major scale or largely based around the major scale. So if your fingers and your mind are already used to playing Nowadays, those notes the in that collection, the yeah. then it's gonna massively reduce the amount of time it takes you to learn new songs. And it's also just going to make you a better improviser as well because having the major scales at your fingers is means that you can instantly check. start improvising over a song that's in that major scale. So for that reason, I'm actually gonna put major scales in the super tier right at the top because I think they're one of the I most important things you can know. Sure. And with that in mind, let's talk about another type of scale. Any music instructor is gonna get you going. And also the blues scale because the blues scale was like a variation of the pentatonics. 
the pentatonic scales, the major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic, are now, generally considered the entry-level scale for guitarists. The just the main scale that guitarists use in most of the stuff they do, and the main reason for that is they are just so versatile. They are slightly simplified versions of the major and minor scale, and I think you can get a lot of distance out of the pentatonic scales. I think that's been proven by um, every guitarist ever. So let's put that in the A tier because I think you can get a lot of mileage out of those. And another Fair common enough. type of scale which you're going to be thinking of already is the minor scales. And I say scales because there's three minor scales really. There's the yes. natural minor scale, the harmonic minor, and the less common melodic minor. And um, knowing all three of those scales, particularly the natural minor, has all the same benefits really as knowing the major scales. It kind of allows you to pre-learn songs. If you're playing a song in A minor and you've already practiced the A minor scale, your fingers are already going to know the sort of movements and places they need to go to. So minor scales, much like the other scales, are really quite important and I'm going to put them in the A tier. So we've got I three types of scales so far. What other types masters. of scale could you be have? Well, there's it's the modes. That the majors so that's the your DS, Mixolydian scale, your Dorian scale, Phrygian scale. And I think the thing is with modes is you don't really need to know modes is it to, possible to turn perform the songs. Even if a song YouTube, uses, let's uh, say, the Dorian down, mode, just a scooch. you can think of it more as being in the minor scale Glenn? with what is there saying? Is it, can, your variation can Rick to it. Ashley so if you already know your major and minor scales, then you can kind of get away without knowing the modes. But the modes really come into their own when you want to improvise and write music with the flavor of those modes. Knowing the modes it really the is, scale useful, is knowing. useful, but it's Actually, not going to be as useful it, and as I didn't even other know. scales. So I'm going to put that in the B tier. Glenn, like, explained and it. when we're talking about modes, we're usually talking about the modes of the major scale. So Phrygian, Dorian, Mixolydian. But modes can actually be of any scale. You could have the modes of the harmonic minor scale or the modes of the melodic minor. Um, and I think these modes, these sort of extended modes, are nowhere near as important as the major scale modes because they come up less often and just like the That's modes of the major opinion. scale they're sort of like variations on the typical right. major and minor well, scale you use them and for, of course you these use modes them for can be useful shifts. for the same reason that the other you know, modes when, when you're shifting useful, to a, another part allow you to evoke can a certain be flavor for... in your writing and your improvising but these scales come up so much less often mm. so I'm going to put this in the C tier yeah, useful to know this is... But this is certainly a not essential. It's, it's true, though, and Jeff. As an extension you, to that, you we've got utilize them a lot. So this is sort of all of the other scales. I would scales. not have pushed that far. So the whole not tone that, scale, not the octatonic scale, it at least the would have been scale. Great. It's really any other scale which doesn't fall under the categories we've looked at so far. They're almost like the miscellaneous scales, and the reason they're miscellaneous is because they're less common. They're not going to come up anywhere near well, as often. you know, if he's, ca he, so if he's I'm classifying the these for like tier, classical music. Because they're useful for evoking certain yeah, flavors. This tier yeah, exactly. in classical music is, is different than, say, modern rock. Well, if yeah, you've always been interested for, in learning yeah. to play the piano, then you can get started right now with Scoove. Scoove is an easy-to-use interactive app that can teach you real songs by Scoove. classic artists like The Beatles, Alicia Keys, and Elton John. Start your and free trial today commercial. with the link in the description. Brought you by so yeah. that's enough about scales. Let's talk now about more of a skill. Scoob and this sounds is transposition. like transposition. <laughs> so transposition like is when you change the key of a song. Jesus, and it, it doesn't mean a key change, as in like when you change key during a song. That's what's called modulation. Transposition is when before you actually start playing the song, you rewrite the music out in a new key. Quite often, when you're playing a cover it's valuable to be able to change the key because the likelihood of your singer's range you can get a different flavor the range of the original singer is quite unlikely I, so you I want to have never, the option to be able to change the key I was for and Stingray, see if it sounds better with that key or not single cover so it's an important for karaoke it's that was essential. in the same tuning as the so original I'm put it, it in was always at now. least to have and sort of following on from that is key signatures i like to try them so in different keys to see how a song that really sounds really applies in the different well, to for sheet us, music so if you're reading uh, category notation if you're not reading notation if you're someone who doesn't really read sheet music knowing key signatures isn't really important at all but if you are reading sheet music and that's true reading key signatures is very important you basically can't read sheet music without that very so those two polar priorities makes me think that I should probably put it in the B tier. 
So this next one's another skill, and it's Roman numerals, Roman numeral analysis. And what that means yeah. is knowing in any given but key the what the chord progression um, is in relation to that key. So if I said the chord progression C, F, A minor, G, and we're in the key of C, then you could describe that as one, four, six, five. The and only you spell reason I know that is because I trained in Spain and why for Roman numerals months. are useful is it allows she you to never think wrote of the anything correctly in the it was all abstract in beyond the key they're in? Because yeah, well, in classical training, four, six, like, five, they, they use these more the than they use. It's in C major, absolutely, or absolutely. C flat major. And this the guy important was thing dick. isn't the particular he chords in the progression; the it's their relation to each other, oh, and that's, that's what Roman numerals are used for. Well, yeah, but so he was I'm like a great guitar player, so I mean, it's fucking more power to him. Particularly when it comes to using your ears, it's an incredibly valuable skill. Now, the next concept I'm just is, kidding, once guys. again, Come on. highly related to reading See, sheet now, music. I would have put those uh, Roman numerals right at the top. Music for me, it. that was the easiest and way for me to understand. Values. In, so in the beginning of my music theory, this note I grasped that half before I grasped what every Brits good boy deserves a fudge. And this Whenever we have a chance to talk, I'd like to tell you guys how If you're reading sheet music, it's note values that tell you how long you should hold a note for. It's telling you the rhythm. But the other thing, though, to consider is that Reading rhythm, reading note values on sheet music is probably less important than being able to read the pitch, being able to read the notes on the stave. And this is because if you're learning it's a song that easy. you know really well, um, or even a song that you've just heard a few times, you probably already know how the rhythm goes. And when you read it off sheet music, you're mainly just reading the pitch. The rhythm is going to The get rhythm you. is coming intuitively to you because you've heard it before. <laughs> so with that in mind, I think it's a important concept, but not the most important. So I'm going to put it into the B tier. The next concept is quite similar, actually, where it's Tonight. quite closely tied to sheet music. It's articulation. So articulation is the particular way that you play a note, whether you play it staccato or whether you play it legato. And there's sort of two instances where articulation is relevant. Depending the on first what would be if you're in some sort of rehearsal room <laughs> and someone suggests, oh, can you play that part staccato? I and sure can. You to know what staccato means to be able to do that. Oh, that's but the other aspect to articulation European is knowing overhead. what the symbols look like on the page, knowing that this dot means staccato or a line like this. See, I always had a tough legato. time with these two. So this is something I think has sort of medium importance because the way you play a note, the articulation, if you're going to sheet important. read, but it's not as important as playing the correct note at the correct time. So I'm going to put this in the C tier. Let's talk a bit more about some rhythm things. Let's talk about time signatures. Now, All you right. don't have to know what the time signature is it's of a piece a of music to play it. God, a bit man. like I was saying before, if you know how a song goes God, have you ever you've played in like a nine piece of you can sort of intuitively feel the meter and, and the pulse. Who writes in nine eight? You have to be counting in your head or out loud what the time signature is. That's perhaps only relevant with more advanced time signatures, eight. more unusual signatures like 5-4 or 7-4. That said, it is very useful to know what the meter of a song is. It can give you that confidence to know that you're playing it right. I guess Rush. Yeah, I, maybe the most valuable like thing with this? time signatures you know what? is knowing what? that they're there as an option. I think most um, people who write music default to some of the more common signatures, 4-4, four, 3-4, four, four, six, eight. Um, they, four, people sort of have a habit of writing in particular signatures. Four. And Some if you're aware that handicap, five sir. four is a thing, if seven four is a thing, it might give you the motivation to try writing in that signature, and that could be a great way of stimulating some new ideas. So that all said, I'm going to put it into the C tier. Now, continuing down the rhythm line, let's talk about touch. Actually, I'd like to see so some exercises when a certain number of notes are squeezed into the space. Better like at those a different time number of signatures. notes would normally fit. They've got to have some exercises the most common to help. By far, is the make triplet. seven eight. So the triplet is when yeah, you're trying to get one hand going one way and the other hand going another way. Two notes. That's three over four, four things like that. And as we all know, if I said you can play a triplet without the minute sword, particularly triplets. Triplets come up a lot in popular music. I get ready for those And if you know how the rhythm of the song goes it's a real you don't thing need to well know sex tuplets always gets me thinking when too. it's most important <laughs> to know what a tuplet is is when you're reading them off the page if you're reading sheet music and you see a tuplet well you need to know what that concept is you need to know what you're actually meant to do with that because otherwise you're just going to be completely stuck so it's important if you're reading sheet music not as important if you know how the song goes 
let's put it mid table into the C tier. And you see, as his tiers go down, the next concept they're more towards is the bottom is for sheet fetch, readers, which people <laughs> who really weird. want to be able to read and sheet it's music. Probably a weird name for something that you actually already do. Now that Rhythmic sounds like a sex when you describe where the beat is in the bar using a particular set of words. So, for example, imagine I want to describe to you without I'm showing sure that, a good that, band name, that I want a beat here. This is the third beat up the bar. Isn't that, isn't so I would just say page. it's on the three. That's pretty simple. But what if I wanted to describe this beat? It's on the eighth note between three and four. The name for this in Rhythmic Soul oh, is though. the three and, because we name eighth notes with an and. Yeah. And if yes. you don't know what Rhythmic Soul is, if you had not learned this before, then it seems like a very confusing and overwhelming concept, but that's, that's the first time I've heard that though. to learn because people do use never this heard all that the time before. to describe where beats fall. It's I an incredibly efficient way to describe where a beat falls in the bar players. without having to write it all down. So if someone says, oh, well, there's a hit on the forehand, Not just for guitar you players. want to know what that means. So Piano players it is a really, actually, uh, That said, I it's could, something that I, I only think is used in quite professional guitar, environments. But... Um, so I'm going to put it mid-table again. I'm going to put it Well, the in stuff the that's in the S category... He's so talking like getting into down. perhaps some slightly more advanced territory. Well, Let's some of this is more advanced. Cadences yeah. as, as he goes down that harmony. tier to the less important so stuff. Cadences are he, he goes movements to the more advanced between stuff. chords that sort of end or complete progressions. The most famous cadence is the perfect cadence, 5-1. Yeah, and there's a few of these two. cadences, these movements uh, between chords. And when well, he's trying to show the difference between moving around a key, basic music theory and advanced harmony. music theory. Um, and this is the and concept that you is need to learn far that. more relevant yeah. in classical music. His point music at the beginning was, like, you don't have to know music theory when it comes to write to pop oh, and rock, okay, I missed that functional part. harmony good. really does... Because it, it, this hurts my soul. I did too. So I'm going to well, put it this is stuff that you reasonably low down. I'm going to put it already do and don't know. Yeah. Now, something we sort of skipped over earlier is claps. So treble Then you know what you're doing. And also less common claps, like the auto clef. What a clef does is it tells you which note is which on the stave. So knowing clefs is ultimately essential for reading sheet music, because if you don't know what note is which on the stave, you can't play any of those notes. But if you're not going to be playing sheet music, Every good if you're boy going to be deserves playing fudge. all of your music by ear or using tablets or perhaps, females, you don't Easter need to know what clefs gets are. Drunk really at so it's one of those skills where it depends That's on, on the what bass type clef, of music you're right? going to be playing, <laughs> what type of environment you're going to be in. So. I think it belongs mid-table, really. Um, because it's essential to reading sheet music, though, I think it's going to go in the B tier. Something else which is largely to do with reading sheet music is dynamics. So dynamics is the relative volume of a piece of music, whether it's played Eating garbage softly fucks or loudly. Boys and, girls. and in music, particularly classical That's music, true. it's represented it really by does. these letters, Look it up which in stand books for if you Italian have any. words for loud and soft. Forte meaning Write it loud down if you have paper. and piano meaning soft. These. Dynamics are far more important Edge in the world of classical music, paper, particularly you when you're reading sheet music, because the whole idea in exactly. classical music is that you perfectly I replicate know. the composer's vision for the music. But the thing is, if you are just trying to do your own rendition of a piece of music, your own vision of it, then you're going to have an idea in your head, a natural idea of where you want it to be louder and softer. So you don't necessarily need that dictated to you on the page. So for that reason, I'm actually going to put it in the D category. Um, some of people might be frustrated are. by that, but I think it's something that you really the, only need if you're reading sheet music, well, and then you only really need it for playing classical music, and then you only really need it for This is really the only category I will discuss, and or the B category. So there's B a lot category. of ifs and buttons there. Okay, so Cadences we really are now getting into some I would quite advanced concepts. The top. So the next one Again, is polyrhythm. Again, one of the first things I learned. A polyrhythm is when there are two different consistent pulses happening at the same time. So yeah. for example, That's one like of the most the common polyrhythms would agree. is four over three. Now, polyrhythms are one of those things where you could play a polyrhythm without knowing that it's a polyrhythm. You could either play it by ear, or you could even read it and not necessarily know that it's a polyrhythm. It's Much ultimately like pissing just blood. a tuplet over normal notation. And we've already talked about tuplets, so polyrhythms is almost an extension on other concepts. Polyrhythms can be valuable, particularly if you want to be really aware of the rhythm of a piece of music, um, or if you want to write using polyrhythms, it's good to well, know um, what they are and the relationship between the pulses, but 
definitely not an essential piece of um, that, knowledge sir. when it comes to theory. So I'm going to put polyrhythms in the F category. And something similar to polyrhythms is polymeters. It's actually almost done. A polymeter the last is when you do have a unified right, pulse, right. a unified Just tempo, right but Roger different that, parts uh, are there's, there's, completing there's a few terms here that I wasn't their familiar meter with. at different times. And therefore they sort of fall out of sync with each other and then fall back into sync after a full rotation. Once again, this is quite an advanced concept. And um, it's probably really? more important to know than out polyrhythms. Out Even though sync. the term out when he said is poly wants to that uh, is the, the part that I'm not sure. How do you play that? Is if you want to perform a polymeter, what it's good to be aware very of what's going on. If you're <laughs> going to be playing in a different time signature, a different meter than the drummer, right. then you sort of want to know that going into it, because otherwise, when things start sounding like they're falling out of time, then is you might start panicking Robin, and trying to correct it. The... But if you're confident about yes, the, the concept of the polymeters yes, and we are to be the three of us. Robin. <laughs> then when that sort of rhythmic tension begins, you won't feel uncomfortable. So I think polymeters are advanced. They're Mr. not essential Robin. at all, but they are more important than polyrhythms, I think. So I'm going to put polymeters in the D no. category. This is the worst Next episode is of Transformers I've ever seen. concept which is almost seen. exclusively talked about in jazz music and it's tritone substitution. What Sorry, a tritone man. sub is, is when rather than, for Actually, example, going uh, five yes. to one, a perfect cadence resolution, you substitute the five chord for a chord a tritone away. Would there be a test so in this example, this? rather than being <laughs> yes. G7 yes. moving to C, the answer is hard to chord. We're so fucked. <laughs> and as you can hear, that has a similar resolution to it. And because of that, it's a very common substitution that you might make when you're adapting metal. a jazz tune. It's Everything common in jazz music to reharmonize, to change the chord progression. And uh, tritone sub is perhaps one of the most common ways to do that. But yeah, that said, it's a concept which is really limited to jazz. And, and if you're not playing jazz, thing. then you don't need to know <laughs> what it is. And you might even do it without knowing that it's called cool tritone sub. So he's definitely so not that talking important. down to us. I think it's mm. going I'm to wind sick up in of this F. guy's I think attitude, actually. If you're into jazz, it's Ladies definitely not important. Ladies and gentlemen, bad lab, we do jazz is a niche type of music. Tone. So I'm going to put We're it in the We are not stupid. We are musicians. Okay, well, he's taking, we're really a, he's taking a music stuff. teacher this approach. This is micro tonality. All my, so all my music theory Western teachers. Music, the smallest interval we can use, the smallest interval available on the piano, for example, is the semitone. You're not listening to me. And everything else is bigger than that. But microtonality is when you use intervals that are smaller than the semitone. There's and when you use intervals that. that are based on yeah. stacks Ooh. of those smaller microtonality. In layman's terms, it's when you use notes He's between talking about the your notes. Dick, Tony. As you can imagine, that is a very <laughs> unusual thing between to do the in notes. music. It's really quite rare. It's, half it's a concept that's half largely short. embraced by people who yeah. are actively trying to push forward the envelope of music and sort of find new This is how you make sounds. new genres. And uh, it's also something that's quite relevant if you're exploring beyond Western music. Um, and that is obviously valuable, yeah. but of course, what we're kind of talking about here today is Western music theory. When we say music theory and you're in the West, yes. you're referring and to Western important. music theory. Like all of this so goes back I to think traditional it's no surprise that micro music theory, winds up in classical the music theory. Sorry, Jacob Collier. Does not necessarily apply to, like, series. say, pop or So the rock. harmonic series is the natural set <laughs> Except in of some overtones cases. you get when you play a note. And what that means is, for example, imagine I hit the note A on the piano. Of course, we're hearing the note A, the pitch A, but also due to the way that sound is physically created, we're actually also hearing quieter overtones, other notes which are also in there, blended in. And those other notes always occur in the same order, the same series. The harmonic series. Now for most music oh, making, see. particularly on instruments like the piano or the guitar, knowing about the harmonic series is very much a nice to know, not a need to know. Um, there are some instruments oh. like horns and also um, things like you're violin, rich little bastard. Where knowing the harmonic series, knowing you're rich um, parents gave about you a studio, you the tuning a... between different uh, intervals sorry. in the harmonic series We're ripping um, apart can be very useful, but for the majority too. of music we making, on the majority of instruments, 
It's really you don't good. Need to know the harmonic series. The I'm the enjoying list. it. I'm going to put that in the. I learned a few I know, terms. I am too. I'm really to we're just, series. We have temperaments. We're just being dicks. So temperaments are the way the curious notes way of the instrument, for example, how he can have been tuned away. How you doing, guys? From the sort of perfect oh, God, ideal please tuning. Don't let this be you that can guy. tune instruments to a mathematical me. ideal. Hey, hey, this, this this it is me. This 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 presentation makes me want to bet my sandwich. And that's called pure intonation. But. For reasons that's I've discussed Christopher in other videos, He's you the fuck don't really off, want dude. your instrument to be tuned to pure intonation. Where's Winnie? And equal temperament oh. actually fixes a bunch so of problems that's with that's that tuning. So, as you can probably tell from the density of what I've just told you, is this, this is, isn't an essential thing a, to know. Am I tripping, or does this it's guy have a Nehru button-up shirt? Um, <laughs> is that like a Nehru <laughs> button-up Instruments like the violin. Where it's you like might want to play around. around Does anyone here will on an instrument like the keyboard? It almost piano, feels like a pre-shirt. You can't yeah. really change your temperament. That's awesome. So uh, you don't need to at all. So this is very so is much he a music teacher or what's going concept. on? He's, there yeah, we have it. We've basically so filled up the entire tier list here. Us. Sir, and you can almost treat this as a list of concepts to learn in order. If you started at the top and worked your way down to the bottom, <laughs> you'd be learning music theory. What's up with the Roman numerals? I don't, I don't know about that. Part. We don't even and you know. Can stop uh, this at guy is like point you out of to. mind. Each at this concept point. you learn actually, is going no. to be useful I, to you. I mean, to expand your musicianship. He's actually expand your ability to, to make and communicate. Oh, yeah, he, he is so giving some good that information. You don't need to know music yeah. theory to make And you don't have to know all those things. That was his and point at the beginning. Hey, Tony, video. can you, you play some Rick Astley while this guy's on? Tony, Rick, Rick Astley. Astley. Something orgasmically? <laughs> no, Rick Astley. Rick Astley. Oh, Rick Peter, Astley? Uh, maybe a little no, Peter Cetera. I, I don't know his one song. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to give you up. you up. I'm never going to let you go. <laughs> I'm never going to touch your dick or hurt you. <laughs> That's not it? Ah, oh, damn uh, it. He was smart. You're a smart guy. Yeah, I haven't. I, I haven't now. tried that song yet. I haven't learned that one yet. You know, but his point there was for those who are like thinking, like I, you either have musicians who are like, I don't need to know music theory. I don't want to know music theory. They go in with the assumption that it's all going to be super complicated, and everything he explained there got to be super complicated. But at the very top, the basic stuff. That stuff shouldn't be super complicated. Scales. Oh yeah, that's like the the foundation. One that shouldn't be super complicated because if it is, I made some jokes you're not going to be have, much of a musician. This guy was, he's not a shit man. Come on now, that this guy knew what he was saying. He knew what he was yeah. talking about. It started easy yeah. and then went to real fucking difficult real quick. And that I yeah. think that's why we all well, got. And, and he was categorizing priority his order of priority was basically to say like if you want to be a sheet music reader you want to go play in the orchestra a composer you're gonna have to do yeah. these things the the last bottom half of that you would have to know all those things if you were an orchestra musician exactly because orchestra exactly. musicians have to be able to communicate with each other they put sheet music up in front of them they've never heard the song and boom certain yeah, people and, can yeah. do that at the very top right. is where your average songwriters are going to be. Learn the scales. Towards your masturbation like Olympics. The, the I had no idea what routine I was doing. I went in there, hands held high, came home with the gold, now, baby. Yeah, so then, play the tape. You go in and feel it out. <laughs> you just got to feel it out there. <laughs> but like those shit. Roman numer numerals that you were talking about, Sig. Um, Chords, a one chord, a four chord, a five chord, back okay. to a one. So is that represented by That's the Roman numeral, numeral or something? It, it's uh, like yeah, four, because four. in C major, one, okay. two, three, in C four, major, one, this is two, a C chord in C major. That's a one That's chord. One. To go up to the F <laughs> would be a four chord. To go up to the G would be a five oh, chord. Oh, hell yeah. That's Lord Almighty, I knew this was And that's happen. a certain... That's a certain chord progression. You'll hear over and over, like hundreds of songs a year will do. Much respect. They might do them differently, but same progressions, just you just change it up, you know. Tonight's episode of Learning Other Shit is brought to you by other people. 
it's all in how you approach the, the chords afterwards. Tony, I was just songs, trying most, to. Most popular commercial songs use very standard chords. Rock. You're, you're when right. They say, what, like, like you play backstage, what you were playing no, earlier, that, that little progression was beautiful. It yeah. was beautiful. Uh, yeah. yeah. That, that should Cigarilla's be a got the fucking... I need to watch got more the shit going on. Yeah. Children are watching. Are children got the watching? Toys. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. If they did are, they don't have put, any supervision. Did anyone oh, no. put up a fucking disclaimer? And by that, I mean. Yeah. Whenever uh, you see me or Pat. Disclaim, disclaim. Yeah, you uh, got to because <laughs> I can't control. Disclaimer. Disclaimer I have no disclaimer. pants on. Do you see Cigarello's Slither Mask? Cigarello. Oh, oh Joe's got the, <laughs> Joe's got the right original Slither Mask. Oh, I'm right. real fucking sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. dude. Joe's got the Fuck real yeah. deal. Don't go there. He is there. Let's hear some uh, more of that damn guitar, man. That shit was fucking awesome. Oh, man. Me and Tony was yeah. rocking it out. Yeah, now we got that guitar plugged in. Dude. I, I was trying to remember working. that um that that progression you were showing me last night that started in C sharp. Oh lord. You told me switch I over my strings the here. Six string or the seven string out? Uh I don't remember I what you were to... using to play it, but I remember the keys that you were doing. You started with a C sharp and then you dropped to the What a, color was the guitar? And then you dropped it. Was... One was green, one was black. And then you shifted to an F. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that the old... Tuning issue. Give me a second, Tony. Oh, did you drop down? Yeah. I say that for Metal Mondays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there it is. Oh, that one works there so good is. with your. <laughs> yeah. So good. Well done. Well done. <laughs> volume like is it sounds low? good to us oh, really? i need to fix it on my end because i can't hear much of shit. oh yeah you probably got to turn it up in obs hey out of, out of curiosity are we actually live no he's going to he's going directed he's not going through obs he's yeah, no, going I mean, are there people into watching his mixer uh there were some people watching when i was in there it's like 40 people well hey everyone father pat mcgroin here and uh this went from something to nothing and then back again. Welcome. Pat me growing. Ah, <laughs> cute out sunglasses at night. That's right. I like that thing you were showing. Don't mess around, around with the guy that shaves his balls. You can't believe it. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that a lot right there. Keep it going. Yeah. Oh, no, dude. I. Oh, not me. Sorry, everyone. This time I shave my balls. <laughs> I got some bumps. <laughs> Razor bumps. Really you got any more juice? Them. Can you, um, do you have any headroom to turn up a little bit, Tony? What's that? Reason. Oh, sorry, guys. I, I was inspired about shaving my balls. <laughs> that is inspiring. Oh, oh that no. Be. You can't Figured be gone, girl. 
I thought the next line was, oh, no. that's how you that's got kicked out of the I'm a comic, 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 chameleon. You're not supposed to look you hot. Come on my back. <laughs> yeah. Just rocking and rolling, man. You know? That's what we're doing here. Cigarillo, everyone. Brought to you by Cigarillo and Divide. Already. Yeah, you've been working on that. <laughs> Last time I shared my bones, but I got bones upon them. Probably wasn't as good as the first time. Sorry. You guys bones. can start again. A minor. A minor, Joe. A to F. Jesus Murphy. Shave your bones. No, I might be having a stroke. Anyone else seeing this? <laughs> oh, no. He He's got ball eyes. Shave your balls. Oh, fuck the Pat, you definitely got to incorporate those. <laughs> well, are you, that's a weird thing to say to another guy. Shave your balls, people. Just shave them. It doesn't have to be about balls. We could be like, the last time I shaved your ass. <laughs> Come on, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Shave your balls, people. Just shave, shave your balls. balls. Shave your ass. Shave your back, ladies. Come shave on. All it's about balls. time. Shave it this all. This is 2001. Shave it all. <laughs> shave your cock. First couple of days, everything's okay, fine. Okay. I feel Actually, Peter Griffin all engine, uh, Ange and Father Pat were coming up with a kick the cock concept earlier. Actually, there's, I had nothing to do with that. That's Reverse awesome. Reverse your statement, sir. She came well, up out of the Surprisingly, like, it was Ange. I want to do a show about kicking dudes corrupted in the dick. Her. <laughs> no. So I'm you all about talking about uh -oh. dicks and balls kickers. and fart jokes, man, but this, she might be serious about kicking one of you dudes, not me, because, yeah, fucking hell. She's not going to fly out here. Dudes, is she going to fly kickers. out here and kick me in the dick? No, seriously. She might. <laughs> Would you yeah, enjoy it? Is the won't. answer. Would you no, enjoy she's it? the yeah. boss, man. No, have you ever been kicked in the dick by your boss? No, uh, not by my boss. You don't like it. You won't. No, trust I won't. me. I I'll take your word for it. <laughs> oh my god, I can't tell you the story because it'll I've just only, it'll sound like a I've boss, only been stupid. kicked in the balls. I've only been but kicked the, in the balls once. But the mom, Once. I was on tour, the mom of heavy metal Once. walked past me and she went, on oh, my dick. And that was the most hardest, like, fucking Bangkok thing I've ever gone oh. through in my entire life. Little and Thailand. she's married to one of the gods of heavy metal, okay? Ooh. Are we all in the same picture? Yeah. Seriously, that fucking hurt. That hurt? Yeah, she fucking basically punched me in the dick. But, oh, yeah. But, well, the that's, one time yeah, that I got that was kicked, the mask she was wearing. It was by a pissed off. Uh, I I had a girlfriend. She, she wasn't How my big girlfriend. Was her, dick? Uh, her boyfriend. <laughs> her, her boyfriend, me and him weren't getting along, and he couldn't fight his own fucking battles. And it, it was the end of the day at school. I was about to get on the bus, and she got mad because me and him were like, you know, I was like, come on, pussy. She so she, she came up to me and fucking full blown swift kick. It's the only time the I've house. ever been kicked that hard. <laughs> and it took like five minutes for it to kick in. Rad. <laughs> Rad, dude. You know, that happened to me one time with a blowjob. Sorry, everyone. Nope. I'm not sorry. I'm going to tell this story. Tell this story. That is the story. Do you That's asshole. the entire story. Oh, Jesus, Murphy. Hi. One time I got a blowjob. <laughs> no. I need a blowjob. Who's giving out blowjobs? Well, you look like you're getting one. <laughs> let me call some I look books. like it. I wish I was. Like, oh. Wow. <laughs> but no. No, Joe, I'm trying, Joe, yeah, trying to yeah. fix my ruined life. Now, you know me, what your life is not saw, ruined, my friend. 
Me and Joe saw Bobby get a tattoo gone. last night. Yeah. And tonight I'm seeing Bullet get a tattoo. Oh, Tell me, Joe, this is not a coincidence. That's Two awesome. nights in a row. <laughs> we wrote, we wrote some songs about that. that's now fucked my life up. I'm going to go tomorrow to Fourth Avenue Bridge in Tucson, Arizona. Hire myself a homeless guy. Hope you do a great fat. I'm a homeless guy. I'll do it. Well, wow, that's loud. Is it? <laughs> no, I can't man. hear anything. All I hear is guitar. We'll talk uh, you gotta show, hear buddy. what your you gotta hear what your needle sounds like. Too. I really need that a home. Shit is like I'll come to fucking screeching. Arizona. <laughs> You're good, bud. So, how's the how's the show? Groin tattoo going? I don't know, man. I keep not wanting to look at it because of fucking memories, man. I can't do it right now. That's why I'm here. You guys are supposed to be distracting me, assholes. Oh, well, have you heard this? Uh, you can go like this. Uh, fucking with your guitar, you can go... Uh, something like that. I don't even know if you can do that. We can't hear your bullet, guitar. You, you gotta plug that shit in. Well, that's you getting a big bullet. I should have, but it's gonna. It's actually a big fucking like a big grease spot. So I had a bunch of back surgeries, so and I've got. It's a nice bit. Oh, I should do that. that would be huh? pretty cool. Yeah, right. Yeah, that you would should be have cool. a bullet. I, well, I think you should I gotta get a find something to incorporate the other side. To your ankle. I, right <laughs> so here it's off just like. Is that a vibrator right here? Yeah. I bow to you. No six. Man. No seven. It's not. Seven. It's not. There you go, seven. <laughs> Mr. Bull, like get a giant cock tattooed down your leg so it's always in your sock, sir. Oh, I should, huh? <laughs> Everybody. Oh, yeah. You should start tonight at, right around your at Uncle T. Darker. <laughs> At Uncle T, at Uncle Score, oh no, at Uncle underscore T. That's okay. right. Underscore flat. T bag. Curve. I got nothing tit, actually. I have no jokes. Touch, Uncle, Uncle T bag. Forward slash clown penis dot com. How's the show? How's the show? It's brilliant, I think. I don't know if anyone's watching. I don't have any way to tell. I don't know. Generally. Let's look. I'll, I'll check right now. Please don't. Because oh, okay. those people, they're like, oh, God, no. Fuck what the hell ever? Lies. Our Angified family fucking loves us. Shut up, dude. They do. Tomorrow's Friday. I can do this to you now. <laughs> right, yeah, there you go. It it's is Friday fucking Friday. Isn't somewhere it? already. It's, it's time it. to flip everybody off. <laughs> we got 52 people. 52. Hey, it down. It Hello, looked like the stream people. dropped. Tony, did the stream drop? Like right I after just the. Pulled uh, it up. Whatchamacallit? Well, I mean earlier. Oh, she bounced. It's it. like she had oh, to start it over. After the dad. Yeah, she bounced uh, it after the dad. Bullet. Is I'm this still too loud, right man? No, that's good, man. It's a little better. I'm okay. buying it, anyway. Music is always good. I just can't hear anybody else talk. If you guys are playing, right. come on. I want to hear it. Ah, we're <laughs> warming up. You know what? If I wasn't getting this done with my leg, I would literally throw my shit together real quick and play bass with you. But this is getting this like gone is yeah, fucking way more. I want you to sure. play your titties. Play your titties. Play those I can tits. Play titties. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Damn. Now we have. You had a polyrhythm on that one. We have seventy-two <laughs> fucking observers now. Play your tips. Boom. Twenty. Oh, there you go. Twenty more, just right there alone. Seventy-five oh, yes. more. Give me a hundred. Subscribing. Hundred and fifty. I'll take Following. my shorts off. Hell Two hundred fifty. Yeah. I take the boxers off. Smash that like button. And 500 and keeps it all on. I'll blow myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Subscribe. Okay, put it on okay, okay. If you can do that, <laughs> that I'm, 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 I'm curious to see. <laughs> even though I don't want to look. Dude, I can't, I can't bend. Just what are you see talking how you about? Pull it off. <laughs> it's that big. I can like. It's the middle of my day, I have to unroll yeah, it. <laughs> 
So they it's like pink birthday candle. The yeah. Blown soap. Tonight pink is birthday like candle. getting real. <laughs> Motherfucker. Confessions up in here. Uh, where are we at? 150? Uh, 10 uh, shorts off yet? <laughs> yes, of course. Well, what time you know, is it? Leave the room. Uh, yours. Well. Bitches. Here we go. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. No, because that guy's right. You can't hear me, but you guys can. Your... Tell him to warn me when he takes short before he takes the short <laughs> Yeah, Tyler said you know this what? morning before I've got to take really my shorts off. Binding, sir, so I can't argue with what he just said. So dance <laughs> on. Dance Damn on. Damn it. Well dance on, dance off. Is that a Miyagi move? No, I want Talks you out. to let Talks him out. do a tattoo on his chest while, while you're going like this. You know what? If a hundred people fucking comment right now, I will get a big fucking smiley face right on my ass cheek right here live. Oh. Now, yeah. Here's I'm, I'm angified, fucking like dedicated. I will word. fucking you tattoo angify at angify. Do that right here across my fucking <laughs> big old gangster style. The other stuff. So, like, so, so like, yeah, right on my. Well, that's already taken. I got a, a big tiger on my when back. When it's in front like okay. that, what do they call that? Like I know a in the back there's a tramp stamp, but oh. if if you get it over here, what do they call that? Oh, oh that's the one um, that you have. Does it have a name? That's usually a bruise because that's where the head of my dick hits. <laughs> yeah. Only yeah. when you're exercising. <laughs> when you're exercising for the Olympics. <laughs> the dick Olympics. Oh, I got Pat. Look at Pat. I got him. <laughs> I'm glad I got my mask on. Writing. It's a whole new meaning to black and blue. <laughs> right? Well, ladies and gentlemen, later we know on, who you are, about electronics. We know Most who you are. Sibian, so <laughs> prepare yourselves. Ah. <laughs> uh, Buzz, buzz. Uh, you got any more volume you can give us? Oh, you want me to say some stuff? Give us some volume. Uh, can you turn your volume up a little? I can try. Here. Where's your Instead microphone? Of bullet your, oh, it's right here on the side dick. of my shit. All right. Don't pull at your dick so we can hear you. <laughs> Who wants to strum on bullets, dick? Punctuation. I'm single now. <laughs> I'm single now. Waste no time, brother. <laughs> Add a loaded time. bullet right here. I'll relocate. My I'll treat suggest, you like a fucking queen. Yes. <laughs> Might I suggest you take some time. No. Find yourself. Get yourself a couple of days. Yeah. But it's been a couple of days. What are you talking about? She went and hmm. fucked my brother three days oh, no. out. No. Oh, wow. Really You're behind the, the curve, then. Yeah, you you should. Yeah, dude. Like, I'm dog. single. Like, I'll relocate. You're very single. <laughs> and yeah. I leave a bruise right I'm here. Plural. I leave a bruise plural right here. I like that. I understand. I'm plural. Words. Which Just means I like to swing it like a helicopter. Tummy. <laughs> I got to get you into the world masturbation Olympics, sir. <laughs> the W. That seat, the it, like, WMO. I try and it flops around. It's like, by. oh. Well, yeah, you here on like, on Andy You gotta Just wax to say it off. You, you damage the esophagus. You gotta it <laughs> and that's after entering the back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. Boy, this is turning out to be a wonderful Tech Talk Thursday. Yeah. The hard so, uh, this, right. this is what happens is when your life gets fucked up, and this is this the is technical the part of putting it back together. Exactly. <laughs> Yo, everybody's talking shit in here. Hey, it's dude. like, wow. Uh, oh my god, so <laughs> weird. Oh, oh, like, don't tell me we're gonna have a Travolta off. Then what? We're gonna have. X -Y then we're gonna dance if like my Michael Jackson. If had a fucking band lab account, I'd send her a fucking link right now and talk shit in front of oh her. Oh my It'd be god, funny. that's weird. Oh my oh, god, that oh, is weird. Hey, PC. Nice surge protector. Maybe you guys yeah, see this why? Yeah, why? Yeah. Why do we want to see uh, this Amazon tour, honestly? Uh, because, what? like, this is a huge surge protector. But I found it in my dad's the, apartment. It was hooked up to a city. It's, it's nice Ooh, when nice. you need clean sound because those, if you're plugging audio equipment into uh, surge protectors, you want one like that. That's how you avoid like electrical noise in your analog uh, shit. 
Oh. Let, let me be honest with you. I'm glad oh, yeah. you said that because I had no fucking clue. I've never seen one of those. You can use that on tour. All I've your analog equipment. Use that with your analog equipment so you can give it its own clean electrical. System. So, so does if you it start take plugging away analog the equipment into hum. any old plug, that's why you get hum sometimes. That's right. Sixty, yeah, 60 cycle. Yeah. Okay. okay. Eliminated. That's good. To, you know what? We were talking about dicks through thirty fucking seconds ago, and now we're talking about sixty cycle hum. Bruce. 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 <laughs> I see that. You okay? Yeah. Electrical Eliminate the dicks. hum, but not the hum on the balls. <laughs> Say was eliminate the hum, but not the hummer. Yeah, <laughs> that just means you grab and pull a little bit harder. It gets a little bit quieter if you do that. See, but yeah. that's just the Russian overhand. You know what, brother? I'm gonna send you a book. What about the rusty trombone? <laughs> rusty you know trombone. That was illegal in '86. You know that. Hey. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Somebody get on fucking the Urban Dictionary right fucking now and look up chocolate collar. Oh. And you'll thank me. Chocolate I collar. made the fucker. I made it. Chocolate collar. Chocolate collar. Chocolate collar. collar. That's it, like okay. dog collar, but chocolate That's collar. That's like, uh, like collar from. Yes. Yeah, yes. I, gotcha. I came up with this I have bullshit. No internet. You'll thank One me. You will have to. Chocolate. Ladies and gentlemen. Collar. Use your smartphone in a smart way and look up chocolate collar. Also, look I up made it. I'm too lazy to look it up. Okay, chocolate collar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Collar. Don't God. read it first, motherfucker. Read it. I don't know if I can. Can I do oh, that? Oh, read the son of a bitch. Oh, no. Uh, well, as long don't as be it's scared. Not do you hear the things I'm saying? It's, as long as Can it's I do that? It's something I can't read. It. Okay. Okay. Just okay. make sure that you basically. At the, okay. At the end of anal, the top lays face down and the bottom gets over the top of the other's upper body and rubs their gait ass across the other's neck, creating the <laughs> chocolate collar. That's true. That's thumbs true. up. I, I thumbs mean, up. I'm the first one in the thumbs up. <laughs> Yeah. I knew I wasn't going to be able to unhear this. <laughs> hey, I'm the first one that they really up made a definition. You're welcome, for that, huh? people. Nice. You were fucking welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Tonight, ever going to be the same? <laughs> I've had a chocolate chin strap. Oh shit! I don't well, even want to fucking know, huh. dude. <laughs> a chocolate chin strap <laughs> with a girl. It's with a, guy it's with a girl. A make that Fine. make that point. No, well, at least it was it's a, girl. a girl, dude. What the fuck? Yeah, I liked her a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> how does your well, ass smell? You would have right, to to get like a chocolate chin strap. Yeah, dude. Like you just imagine like <laughs> sticking your fucking chin face chin in there. Belch? You know what, is boys? Every one of you was like, "Yeah, when it happened the first time." So, she did yeah, not return the favor. She did not return the favor. <laughs> what, oh. finger in your butt or the other way? Very upset. <laughs> hey, stop telling people what I do. You're to you. confusing Father Pat. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys, I'm not, I'm not do you guys know? Country. Do you know what a dick fillet is? A dick fillet. Dick fillet. <laughs> dick fillet. <laughs> Tyler said, yeah, "Look you don't up." Don't get it at Belch. McDonald's. No, look up the McDonald's. Belch. It's it's when well, it's when you, is. it's when someone well, sucks dick and it looks, smells, or tastes like chicken. Yeah. Oh, oh, what the I mean, fuck, dude? Have you ever felt someone with a straw? <laughs> is no, this in the Urban Dictionary too? One. Yes, it, oh, is. it yeah. should be. If it's not, then <laughs> Webster I'm has no Canadian fun. dictionary. Webster has nothing on the Urban Dictionary <laughs> these days. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, please be more bring commonly the music referred back. to as goat belching. <laughs> Get a straw, ladies and gentlemen. You'll need it. Donkey punch. Oh, that yeah, one. Yeah, that one I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, come on, Tony, bring us back to the music. I'm just trying to think of music. It sounds like music. It sounds like music. It sounds like music accompaniment to the Bible. Pretty fucking bad. There's something should be Sorry, I, I thought it was oh, I not Monday. I don't know that one. <laughs> What's flat air? Oh, no. That was the first one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry. I'm hearing, I'm hearing half of this and half of that. I caught nipples. You had me at nipples. He's got nipples. On, he's got ripples on his nipples, like pennies on a. I got pond. hair on my nipples. I got That's hair. History. That's new from Magic The new man. nipple shaver, five thousand. Brought to you by Bullet and his nipples. What man, man are you? Whatever. They they told me I used to have like a happy trail. Motherfucker, that's a mud patch down to a fucking truck tree stump. Wait, wait, wait. Who Angie's is gonna make they? you Angie's gonna make you wear those Angie patassels. <laughs> if you're gonna come oh. on shirtless, you're gonna have to put on some of those Angie pasties. Hey. <laughs> I, repeat, I am single. I have to show off my body so I can find me a rich sugar mama that's gonna take care of my fucking dumbass. Those pasties may get you more, ladies. Yep, get the angina tassels today. And if you have any problems, <laughs> call one eight hundred. You are not our bitches. dot com. Yeah, that one. That door, Ooh, that's the official off. number. Eight hundred. You, you are you buy? not our bitches. Uh, No, really. Actually, we are very happy that anyone that is still out there listening to this crap is there. Thank you yes. for yeah. hanging out. And Fuck You is a great sponsor of uh, ours. I like the spider. Well, yeah. Fuck Off is the biggest sponsor. <laughs> fuck Off. Uh, we actually have Fuck Off is 64. <laughs> Sponsored by Edgify. Brought to you by Cobra Garden. I don't even know now. Yeah, Fridays are all fuck off. That's his tradition. I'm just getting an early start on my day. What can I say? Go back. Go back to. Go back, Go back. to. That was nice comprising, man. Mm -hmm. That's a solid one right there. Oh, is it detuned? I think it detuned something. That's a neat. Solid, man. Slide down the bed. Friggian mode. Oh, is Glenn hey, uh, you on the base? Hey, do you, still do, here. do you guys know anything mm -hmm. about orange amplification? Orange what? Orange amplification. Oh, orange amplification. Orange, 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 orange boxes? I, I have several orange amps. Uh, a couple of them were given to me by friends. I, uh, me, what, this what, guy. Uh, Okay, one I've uh, used multiple times, but only for acoustic stuff. Like I switch back to my Black Star often, almost oh, always should. up through yeah, my Black Star. Uh, but like my Marshall. orange. Now, what's the deal with those? Oranges? I don't know whether to keep it or whether what's to the lose deal with those oranges? That... Is it about their sound? Because they well, are popular. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're like the modern popular. gorillas. You remember the Actually, gorillas the, back in the 80s? So Jim, when Jim it comes to like Jim my side of it, my tone and the orange. Years. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're good, man. Go, go ahead. 
Chamber in the last 20 years has brought orange amplification back to the forefront and he is one of the guitar players for slipknot i won't say he's the rhythm or the lead they're all the same but they are who they are and uh, they each have their own fucking style that would which makes slipknot they each have their number if you will neither rhythm nor lead they kind of both switch between two the both of them at different points and different songs so I, I've been using this Horn does that. Let me let me reach right. under this fucking table right now and oh, Yeah, they cram a lot stuff. into a small little package with those, right? Do the reach around. Yeah. Go ahead and do the yeah. reach around. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Well I had to jerk him off. Oh my god, it's so pretty. Oh my god, I want to put my wiener in it. <laughs> it is pretty. Oh yeah. I wanted to put it's wiener in me. Yeah. I would so so this try. little this little fucking guy right here. That's a little acoustic from, guy. From yeah. Orange. And I've used it for acoustic stuff. So my my question to you guys and everyone else, how do I make this sound like Jim Root? Honestly. You won't be able to. It won't happen. I didn't, I didn't think I could. No. I, I, because now I'm going to say, I'll explain to you why. Is that he what you No. No, it's not. It's not. He uses what he actually uses is an Axifex and runs it through kind of an orange setup BST style plugin, but okay, no, uh, it's all ran through Axifex. Uh, well, and, well and yeah, he, he's I know using he's BSTs. Through, he's through not just going to be using so, one. He is orange. He is a huge sponsor of orange because of their so tone. It's the clanky caps. side of it. That's what I was saying, on, Tony. On tour, I bet you it's just orange caps. That's it. It is. Oh. That's what the case is. But everything that's else, that's otherwise, yeah, really awesome. actual tone is yeah. all run axe effects and shit like that. It, that yeah. totally makes sense. Totally makes yeah. sense. You know, it's a, it's a whole different challenge when you're trying to get your live sound. Like, you know, yes, versus yeah. the studio where you can do whatever. Not anymore. Especially do with post in the studio. Not anymore. It's nice to be able to do all that shit post live. The trick to being a good fucking oh, I live do that sound on is like, how do I make that studio sound while I'm on the stage and not have to bring well, like? And now here's the cool thing about cabinets. that. Well, these new pl- like these new uh, guitar pedals that they're coming out with, where you can uh, create your own uh, sound chain, your own. I I'm not thinking right now. I can't. Your own whatever. Your well, own yeah, signal these new train. effects boxes are, with, are like now. BST. Here's the thing. I can take. I was actually looking into one of them for my bass because I fuck it. I'm single. I want to go somewhere and tour. Somebody find me a band quickly. But I was looking into it, and I can actually take my FX chains that I've made with my plugins like Parallax and and the other shit that I use. And I yeah. can put them into a format within their software yeah. with that it's like thing, a portable computer. and put it on that pedal and put it on my stage and have all yeah. the sounds I fucking record with. Hey, if brother, any this of you is going to come across one of those effects processors. Mean. Show Tony, me an effects Tony, processor that loads VSTs. No, you're good. Tony, uh, give me one an second. An effects processor that plays VSTs. Pat wants to this, be mean to me. Hold on. This is going to come across as mean. You have to go and do it yourself, brother. There's no one else out there that can do it for you. None of us can get you in that band. You have to do it. And it's the hardest fucking job. I left just home. Word of mouth is all I'm someone. saying. I don't give a shit what not anybody does. Just getting I, into a band. I'm just I being love, a smart ass. I don't even really give a fuck. It's, I it's staying in a band. I wanting personally to stay. will put your name Bands out there are, with the people I know. But it's you. It's you and your fingers, man. You're a finger guy. That's different than most bass players I know. Oh, hell yeah. Honestly, yeah. almost every bass Same player that, I know is an ex-guitarist. Oh, yeah. You're different. Yeah. Sets you apart. Yeah. And, and I got an amazing tone and heads, fucking like weird style. If there's any metal heads around you, Greg, that want to jam and they especially want to perform, all they got to do is hear you. And yeah, there's no metal head out there who, if they need a bassist, they're going to be like, Fuck yeah, this dude is willing to come and jam. You're not going to have a hard time finding a band. It's staying I'm, in a band. I'm, a band is a big fucking commitment in itself. It's like five oh, bitches well, that you're connected to. Like, I suggest you're way you're hard. Getting like you're preaching to the choir. Don't get in another one with five or ten or eight dudes. Oh, wait. Sorry. <laughs> I love you, man. 
Love it too, brother. I'm just high and careless and don't care and fuck it, whatever. Hey, where's my guitar? Play some guitar. Yeah, let's do it. Slither. Right, so it's changing his background. Yeah, it looks shit. like Joe is wailing. Some is that an actual like hat, music. Joe? Is that a like hat? you're wearing that, right? Like yeah, actually I'm wearing, wearing that? Yeah. Okay. Nope. You're not well, having You've a got stroke. fucking Cigarillo over here who's using a filter and Tony. Oh, yeah. And I look over there and I'm like, I can't tell for sure. Joe's, like, Joe's the real deal, man. Real that yeah. Is fuck all you other guys. Taylor, right. hey, where's your mask? I like the way that sounds. It's got a good tone to it. Imagine my face behind that. That kind of sounded cool, too. The opening note? That was, uh... The, you know, e uh, that old E and D. Yeah, that I one. Dropped, I dropped the D. And then, so my E's here. And I just like playing with that a lot. You drop the D. Yeah. You drop the deuce. Did you drop the D in her mouth? Negative. Did you dunk it? Uh, I went. I went. I go straight for the eye. ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know. The chocolate. The chocolate. Hell highway. yeah, I do. Chocolate color. They can reach their D. I get down there where they can't get. You're a dirty deed motherfucker. <laughs> you brought it out of me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'm just as bad. Where I'm going with that. <laughs> Sounds good. What? It just blows me away. I can't believe it. It's a great album. I'm telling you, Ange, that sound file. Oh, is that a Buckethead song? What? Well, no. He said it's alive. Somebody said it's alive. Kind of like easy. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's the name of his album? Yeah, yes, that was one alive. of his first pikes, man. He's up to like 300 and so, I don't know. He was putting out one a day for a while. A nice 45-minute <laughs> album a day for like a year. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. But he's a maniac. Yeah. That's to be expected. This big guy. Fuck yeah. I always wanted to start a song with that. Like like reverse uh -huh. reverse okay. Beethoven. Take the fifth symphony and do it like yeah. 
with the same attitude, just use, reversing the. Uh... And then you say, fuck ya. <laughs> fuck, 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 you. Fuck, 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 you. Oh, yeah, yeah, you say, fuck ya. Yes, we say, oh, yeah, 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 fuck ya. Fuck ya. Oh, yeah, yeah, fuck ya. It's a brilliant idea, sir. I don't know. Some shit. And then Angie comes in, she says, Fuck ya, fuck ya, fuck ya, fuck ya. She was and dying to howl there. there. You are near to fight. She was dying to howl. You're gonna die. <laughs> Guns and Roses can do it. <laughs> Actually, you're getting fried. Guns and er, Roses. Remember. You can't share what roses? You are. The R itself is trademark now. I know. That's why you be. Right there, uh, quiet riot. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, drive, a little throwback to the 80s. Ah, okay, okay. It's weird. What I do it, some riffs that it, have they're cheesy, but they're e heavy as fuck there? at the same time. It's weird. I what never shot quiet riot. Again, that's one of my favorite. Those bands. are the chord combinations. Those are the chord combinations that I was talking about with Sig earlier. You can do those three chords and. It's Metal Health with Choir Riot. It's yep, yep. a pop song over here. Same chords. You know, mm -hmm. I would like to give a little lesson at some point about uh, drop tuning. Honestly, it's one of the easiest things and guitar players. I would love all you guitarists to come on and show me your drop tuning and the effect that it does. Because so it's, many it's, of you guys are doing it. Back, all yeah. these back guitarists in, these days that are trying to get that heavy sound trying to there's get that grungier heavier yeah. sound and there's a slew of chords you can gain off of that too, absolutely that absolutely they're play. all all That's almost standard. open chords but they are beautiful mm -hmm. chords uh and, and, and in, in 1987 that was the first time someone showed me how to drop d yeah. and uh it was long before nirvana long before any of that yeah. bullshit and i played and around with it and i was like oh okay yeah this is kind of cool and then nirvana hit and Everything changed. Yeah. The world fucking changed and sound for changed. guitar players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I used to tease up my hair and my pubes. I don't even tease my pubes anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. As is tradition. Well, these days you shave them. <laughs> I don't know. I'm Canadian and also, you know, other things. Oh. Yes, you old school Canadians. <laughs> we like to keep it old school. Oh. Meaning, like, actually, if you were to shave your balls in the frozen tundra, and the fucking frozen tundra actually fucking froze, Mistake. your balls would freeze too. <laughs> you don't have to shave them. They free the pubes freeze yeah, you off. You need that insulation there. down there. You need the insulation, sir. Obviously, you've for... never been beaver hunting. Well, yeah, I use it for cushion oh, when I've I'm been pushing. Beaver hunting. <laughs> Joe oh, showed me a video. Here we last. Go, I need that it. buffer. Joe, I need that buffer. Joe showed me well, a video like, last night of um. Metalheads, metalhead guitarists that mm -hmm. that are 
are cutting edge these days and every one of these guitarists had a seven string or an eight string so yeah these are yeah, the things but, I mean, that are changing that, the sound of metal that was a genting 1990 through 2010 because most people get there was like 15 20 guitarists and, and only two of them were on six strings really the rest of them were all on seven strings that was and a most genting, of them were on eight uh, strings okay gents. competition yeah, yeah okay okay yeah, yeah, yeah. genting you're gonna want to yeah get down there below d you can gen I, I don't on know. D. I guess. Uh, I guess my personal and opinion on the whole thing would be. Well, oh, you, play you can you. gent on D. Is that you what can. you said? <laughs> yeah, you can. You can process it and make it genty. Yeah, drop the octave a little bit. And genty. It'll, it'll help it. Is that what they call it? Genty. Why yeah, do they genty. call it genty? Uh, because it goes gent, 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 gent. Yeah, that's exactly right. Gent. Makes total sense. D J E N T. Gent, gent, gent is my jam. E N T. And, and I and actually think that was. A, that they're getting word. an extra B on the seven strings. They're getting an extra B. It's an extra well, octave. Yeah. And, string, and, and then you on drop the that string. to the A. And then you you're another, fucking sick. Ooh. And then, yeah. You got yeah. an like open A like night. that. But, huh. but it's also. Everything is played off of. It first starts with the first kick. Yeah. And then the snare. Everything in between doesn't really matter. So it's, it's almost Morse code. Right. Exactly. It's a Morse code. Holy yeah. shit. It's where the guitar. I've never heard anyone to refer to it that way. You're absolutely it's right. It's where the it's guitar Morse takes. Yeah. Well, that's how they. That's precedent how they were presenting over the percussion. It, like Morse code. When, when you're carb, when you're palm it becomes muting, percussion. When you're palm muting your guitar and you're yeah. go, 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 it's percussion, guys. So exactly. let's be clear. So. Yeah. So get your time right. Gent is percussion. It's a, yeah. a guitar that's a good that is practice made for percussion. a percussion instrument at that point. Oh, in and out single. Your, your amp is super loud. Uh, yeah. Dr. B, can you come over and stick your dick in the other <laughs> output? Yeah, I just went to the seven string <laughs> to give that example of... Well, it better be a quarter that. inch, Jack. So we just went from D to... Now my lowest chord is an A if it's not in tune. Oh yeah, just yeah, that. But let's stop yeah, right there. To that extra, let's let's like, give it a little that, lesson really extra, quickly. Oof. You're on a seventh string. How did you get your seventh string, your lowest string, your your top string? How did yeah. you get that to A? Oh, uh, normally it's in B. No, I think it's B. When no, yeah, the seven. Yeah, on the yeah, seven yeah. When you slap it on and you tune it to four forty, that top but, string is going to be B over the E. Um, but you just drop it like you would to drop from drop D when you're in so E. Again, so you're going you're down a whole step. One more half step. Right. Yeah, you go down a okay, whole step, so, which so. is two frets. Now, now, let let me ask you. Do you always tune to 440? Because if I honestly, if I was playing guitar strings at 432, 432 was you, designed you for stringed instruments. You mentioned that last oh, night. Um, Try your tuning at 432 on a stringed instrument. It's where it resonates but the most dumb, natural. Dumb that down for the, the rest of the, the guitar universe players that are out there. there. So is that is that E flat? Right. Is that A flat? Technically, or is it when in you between? tune down. You're 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 not actually tuning down a whole step. Um, you're so tuning down flat. in frequency. So it's still it's, a, it's yeah, like yeah. those microtones. It's just in between. That, that guy, what he was talking about earlier, when he was talking like micro tuning. Yes. When you tune down from 440 to 432, you're not shifting like a whole step. Um, right. You're shifting frequency. But 432 sure, sure. is the vibration that we all feel because you're sitting on a planet that's vibrating at 432 in a universe but vibrating what about at 432. Jacob? the only reason why we tune Jacob to 440 right is an industry on a standard bale of hay and it's wondering but what the fuck you're talking natural about natural acoustics vibrate at 432. Bale of well, <laughs> i think i'm gonna no, be able no, to clear we it gotta, up we have oh damn that's a nice hair dude everyone and i'm not i don't uh, mean that derogatory in any way what i'm saying is if he's getting Jacob is right sitting now. there how does he make what you're saying happen uh yeah i know what you're saying so when you pick up a guitar and you, How do you tune, tune it Joe? and you're uh, say do you say you just pick up a, tuner or do you like, tune by ear 
Uh, no, you got to use a tuner. You can tune by ear if there's a song playing and you can kind of... You change from 440 to 432. I if you tune problem. by you ear, it's never tuner. right. There's never one that's ever in history that's ever been oh, yeah. correct. Yeah. So don't. don't Nobody's even tuning to 432 by ear unless yeah, they've got pretty... perfect pitch. <laughs> and See, they can but be that's like, oh where God, you're throwing that's everyone off. You're throwing numbers that no one understands. So is it... Is it... A flat? Is it a... It's not as low as A flat, it's, but it's, it's, diff- it's, it's just a, a flatter different a. tuning frequency. Yeah, it's it's slightly lower. You know what would help if you it's flat. Can you it's flat maybe next week hertz. get a chart? Whether I'm here or not, can you put up a chart that shows the difference between that? Not the cigarette. Oh, if, if like, anybody can, oh, Glenn's the oh. man. <laughs> yes, Glenn. One way to, one way to think of it is that the A440. If you look at that one, then you look at a220 uh, you figure that those are both a's and yeah. so there's a full octave between there so the, it takes mm-hmm. a full 220 of uh, okay. frequency change to go those to do an, notes to do an octave right yeah. so what you're saying if i was to uh, semitones make this into like a semitones cup are like measurable by one frequency cup measurement we're talking about one quarter yeah out of four quarters we're talking 432 one quarter, not versus a half 440 Eight just hertz difference. Difference. I got you. So enough thing to is manipulate the... the sound, but are not not enough to distort it in any way. Not enough to match no. another an A flat. It's okay. higher than an A flat. In the That's case the... of acoustic instruments, it'll a string will resonate better tuned up. It will sound more natural to the four thirty two. A, a middle C will resonate on now, a string more naturally because now I'm going to sound like an asshole at but... the universal frequency. But I can have taken them lots too. of lessons and done lots of things, but like these are things that I don't know. I know how to do them. I don't know the fucking names. So what you guys are doing right now is teaching yeah. me for sure. Thank you. Yeah, the one thing most people like, would be at 440. Clip on tuners, like a clip on tuner. There's a button on the back where if you hit it, it'll yeah. default to 440. And then there's okay. an up and down yeah. arrow where you can just use that down arrow and you'll see it dropping down to 432 and then it'll be tuning you in direct to 432. Yeah. Because if you don't do that and you just have it, you know, if it's set to 440, it'll tell you um, that you're you know, way flat if you are tuned to 432. So that's sure. that's where the difference is. You have to change it on the tuner to tell it what the baseline is. And if the baseline on the tuner is 432, then you're going to line everything up just right. Yep, yep. And it's not always a ass. perfect science. Sorry. Because with, with guitars, tracks, um, my bad. Louis... <laughs> Louis, the, the band, the professor, the band lab professor, um, he made a good point to me once. There, there are guitars that are designed to sound the way they do at 440. So it's, it's, well, it's just like you, Caesar you need changing to try your calendar and see how it sounds with the shift, you know? Yeah. A little yeah, no, might I agree not with tune both of down you. I agree. To 430. Some I guess asshole said 440 is the standard. Point. And there's 12 months in a year. Yeah. There's, you Roland, know, there's 13. Yamaha, there's 13 believe, moon cycles. I believe all those every companies. instrument has a soul. This one has a soul. I don't Me know too. Well, yeah. Well, anyway, this one has a soul. Everything what, has a soul. And I put my soul in them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it takes someone else to uh, achieve that thing to sing. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen. Kids of all ages. Edgified. Greg. Bucket Tony. Mr. Bullet. That's really all I got. Play something, sir. Please Edgified or Edgified here, buddy boy. You don't you don't even know at this point. <laughs> I don't. It's all it's pumpkin time. <laughs> Should have and a one. How are you doing, Ange? And it's you. The pumpkin and it wants you free. <laughs>
another oh, droning no. effect. Love it. No, that would be an awesome Halloween song. Oh, I know. We're going to do, uh, me and my buddies are going to do a concert. Me and my drunken uncle? On the me back and my of drunken uncle's trailer. a good song. Oh, do I know your drunken uncle? No, but me and my drunken uncle is a good song. Well, I have a uh, something have for to the show for that I'm going to call Uncle Brother. Uncle That's Brother? Nice. Just, yeah, Uncle Brother. He's always there. <laughs> uncle Brother. <laughs> Excuse me, folks. I'm going to go get a beverage. Heard that, sir. As they call you in Mexico, pedophilio blanco. Oh, that, he went that's there. good, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't test in the waters, huh? <laughs> just fucking. I'm uh, just sorry. <laughs> Pretty sure they cut off. <laughs> I'm gonna see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, Doctor B? How's the leg? Father going? Pat's a feeler. He needs to feel out those. I'm pretty sure. I'm I love how you slid it in, though. <laughs> well, that's it. Wasn't me. That was pedophilia Blanco. This has to stop. This has to stop. Actually, oh, and then we have. My the apologies, sir. Then we got Sig with the bro. Oh, <laughs> that is a perfect one there. <laughs> that and shit burn. is super creepy. <laughs> it is actually, and you know what? I mean, Ooh, nice. I'm not a Mexican and/or Hispanic or Latino, but I'm not here to judge anyone that comes up with names. <laughs> It sounds like a wrestling Why name. is everyone laughing? <laughs> Just not it's like, like when I got I a good name. From somebody who you want I got to wrestle. a good name. Pat. It's like when people uh, laugh at me when I say I'm from the hardcore streets of Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. All right, Pat, how about this name? Sloplo Escobar. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Sloplo? Yeah, like fucking... Yes. Sloplo <laughs> Escobar. There you go. The, the big fist, right? That's what that means in Spanish, right? The giant <laughs> fister. I don't even know, man. I don't speak Spanish in this country. <laughs> Actually, I don't really speak Spanish at all. Uh, I was taught some really bad things by some people that were probably bad, but I love them very nice. hard. And uh, yeah, most of it is really bad, but super funny. Oh, nice oh look at that. It does. It says fucking Father Pat McGroin right there. That's weird. It's good. <laughs> it does look good. It does. It looks like it's painful. <laughs> Could you, uh, in oh Spanish, put God. right below my name, Senor Puñetas? <laughs> Puñetas. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that means Mr. Masturbator. Is that correct? I'm not sure. But... It sounds good. Well, you know, either way, I'm I, I am a uh, professional man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Jesus, Murphy. I'm right there my with you on that. <laughs> my show might be the first one to ever get kicked off a band lab because this shit is going to be. I great. take my job very seriously there. <laughs> you know what, sir? I am training as we speak. <laughs> I got disqualified, but I got to take off for pumpkin time. Uh, Slither, Slither. He's, uh, he's training. Can he hear us? Is he training? He's training. He doesn't have his headphones. His mask is. <laughs> okay. Right. It might be but clogged he, up. He, he was he training hard earlier. Pumpkin time. Yeah, he just put he, the headphones he on. It is pumpkin time, so oh, you're done. You're speaking to me. I'm sorry, my headphones. I had a wire issue. Maybe one day we can talk about why wires like to get tangled up. Yeah, I like that. That's song. why blue. Kind of like find news. out the reason. It's a mystery. Hey, it really what were you saying? Were you asking me a question or oh, saying no, something I to me? You, you're the host now because it's pumpkin time. Oh, pumpkin and time for Glenn real. Is your co-captain. Okay. Yeah, you're the, you're she, the host. she passed you the baton. Okay. Enjoy right. eating. Is that American for a I see for the rest of the night. Uh, it kind of looks like one. It's the <laughs> dog <-ish>. show. Doodles. <laughs> I am. I am. Show. Wow. Good night. Okay, now it's time to slither this shit out.
Oh, what you slithering into? Everyone, say goodnight to Miss <laughs> yeah, Angie. I'll, Fuck yeah. Everyone, show I'll your hit junk. That. I'll okay. hit that for you, Angie. Wait. Whoa, Good night, whoa. mother. Whoa. I'll see you tomorrow. So you can baby shirt me on my show. Wait, I'm gonna fire you. I'm gonna fire okay. it out when you deploy it. Okay, okay. See you then. I'll be loaded, buddy. I have the power. There we it's go. A shoot Castle off. of Great Skull. <laughs> Castle yeah, of Great of Skull. <laughs> Welcome to After Hours with Slither, Tony, everyone else involved, myself included, I can't remember my name at this point. We're all pretty high, we're out to bring you. That's Sorry, getting uh, a nice yeah. crunch. Got a little so, part. So that you're running nice you're running match. from the seven string mm -mm. into that uh, uh I went back to the six. Boss, I'm more right? comfortable on the six. The seventh is just oh, I don't know why too, I bought that. Too much cock. So yeah. you're going from the six? It was two hundred bucks. I had to buy <laughs> one, it. It was a Jackson. One extra string. <laughs> oh yeah, you don't pass that up, man. Mm -hmm. You don't pass that up. Two hundred bucks, bro. I new. want that. So you're going from the that to the Jackson makes a nice you're going to seven the boss string, and then to your I don't know, man. I like the Schecter that I play. I'm going from the Charvel to my... I have a Boss uh, floor pedal with the lots GT. of effects. And then I'm going into a Looper with one, two, three channels. I can... Oh, you got the Looper in between I can the loop Boss and my the, uh, Zoom? Fucking backups. That's how you were, I that's can loop how you were doing it. Yeah, that's useful. Fucking backups. backups. I can loop my, my fucking, fucking backups. backups. Nice, I can dude. loop my. Oh, we are going backups. to be using that. I can loop my, <laughs> fucking, backups. Backups. Loop my <laughs> fucking backups. I can loop my <laughs> fucking backups. <laughs> I can loop. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, don't be. Cause oh, now... we are going to be using that. Hell yeah. yeah, that inspired these guys yeah, to I play get with a little... their toys. <laughs> and what's well, cool I mean... is you can get a loop going on the looper and then change your effect on the other pedal. And it sounds good because usually when you loop and then you play the same frequency or whatever that pedal or VST is pushing out, those two sounds fight each other, especially when you're playing the same yeah. chords and you get shit sure, for yeah. sound. So sure. I yeah, learned that early on. And that's... Use different sounds when effects, you layer your music. Effects in themselves will compete against each other. So if you're looping something and you're using a reverb on one and a delay on another one, you'll get some weird shit. It'll bite right. your ass if you're right. not careful. That was called a bad loop. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Usually, I that's, have shoes that's on. That's the and sewer I have intro, control. though. That was that's it is the sewer, original isn't sewer it is, intro. Isn't it? it sure is. Hell yeah! <laughs> Let me try that's that one That's how the time. sewer starts.
Getting nice. loopy. Loopy. Getting loopy tonight. Loopy That's how you were. Oh, damn. <laughs> Sid got a penis nose. <laughs> what? That is impressive. <laughs> oh, I got to find that one. <laughs> wow, the ladies love it. The ladies yeah, that, love that. That puts, <laughs> that puts Gene Simmons to shame. <laughs> Swinging like around. Mr. Pickle Nose. <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah, you need that one will of those. happen. Well, actually, you gotta, if you keep flopping her around, buddy, they're not going to be interested. So. We call it the Pinocchio effect. <laughs> well, the opposite of that is Erecticus. It's Latin. You can look it up. In All right, guys, I got to go, man. Peace out. Much uh, love, it's a blast, on, brother. Man. All right. See you next time. Take it easy, All right, we'll do. Take Always care, good brothers. to see you, man. All right, later. All right. Later. I'm always impressed by the effects. <laughs> always.